And we're just so thankful tonight that you were willing to come out and support this benefit concert in aid of Ukraine. And there will be lots spoken of that journey in just a little while throughout the evening. But I'm thankful tonight to have this beautiful team here along with Glenn. How's that? Thank you, Chris. Good to be here. It's good to have... All of my friends here, we're all friends in the family of God, and I believe the Lord has brought them here for such a time as this to share with us and to bring, I think, a little more awareness of what this journey in Ukraine is all about and what's happening there and how can we partner alongside. I know we've been praying much over these past days and months for Ukraine, and we know that there's folks even tuning in online that watch us regularly from Ukraine and so isn't that something it's a small world isn't it, it really is and so without further ado we're going to continue in singing and worshiping and praising the Lord together but I want to offer a prayer blessing Glenn Tedford good to see you again buddy good to, good to have you all here my buddy Chuck back here we haven't seen each other in a long time good to see you here buddy would you stand and let's have prayer together God's blessing upon the evening. Lord, truly, we are a blessed people. We come together tonight, Lord, recognizing who you are, and we want to uplift the name of Jesus. And I pray that as your name is lifted high, that there will be that one, two, a dozen or more that would come into a relationship with Jesus. We pray, Lord, that there will be transformation as we gather together tonight. And so, Lord, would you take the lead of all that will be said and all that will be done, and may it bring honor and glory to your name and your name alone. We pray, and I know it will be prayed again for our friends in Ukraine. Will you, the Spirit of the living God, just rest upon our friends there this evening? And I pray, dear Lord, that you will continue to make a way where there seems to be no way, that you would open doors of provision and opportunity. And so, Lord, now we commit our time together to you. Your will be done, and may your name be praised. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Major Pilgrim. Well, what a joy and what a treat to be here with a church full of people. 
It's so good. Not everybody going to church anymore. Fellas got it kind of given up. Yeah, one fella said to his wife, I'm not going anymore, not since COVID. She said, yes, you are. He said, oh, I'm not. She said, well, I'll give you four reasons you're going to church, buddy. Number one, you got three kids. You need to show them the way. He said, nobody loves me up there, and I don't love any of them. She said, it doesn't matter. You're going. You're married to me. You're going. I'm going. You're going. Well, I don't really want to go. She said, there's more reasons you're going. Number three, you just bought a new suit, for goodness sake. And number four, you're the pastor. So it's difficult to get people out to church, but it's so good to see you tonight. Uh, it's been a while since I've been with Chris and uh, yeah, former rebel Pentecostal gone army. I don't know what to think of that, but nevertheless, <laughs> I guess you win some, you lose some. I don't know. It's so nice to have our team here. We'll introduce them, and as the night goes on, sing lots of things, and then uh, Pastor Gowdy will, uh, my good friend Lauren will... Uh, share some of his things from the Ukraine. His feet were on the ground. His, uh, he was in the trenches. He's, he knows all about it. So uh, he'll enlighten you tonight and share that. But before he does, we're going to do some singing and have a great time, whether you enjoy it or not. I really don't care. We're going to have a good time. This is a song written from central Newfoundland, and uh, the brother of the writer just shook hands. I hadn't seen Dale in a while, but his brother wrote this song a little while ago, Harbor of Peace, and uh, we do it at the Fisherman's Conference or weekend every year in Harbor, uh, Port of Graves. Here we go. Storm clouds are gathering over on the horizon It's time to look for shelter From the wind If your vessel has a longing To let her anchor down Ahead there's a harbor Sail on in Sail on in To his heart Just 
Just outside the harbor Falling victims to the storms of their lives Oh, if they'd only listen Calvary shining big song for you. Right out of uh, Embry, that's the suburb of Lewisport. Yeah, we got some people here tonight from Lewisport. And uh, I know that we're only a secondary thing to Costco, but thanks for coming anyway. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of things I've taken in life and a lot of things I've done. I have a lot of experiences. A lot of life is an interesting place. And uh, it can throw you a lot of curveballs. It can throw you a lot of things. It's not always perfect. It's not always funny. It's uh, a place where uh, sometimes it can be a little tad rough. But uh, I don't really mind what comes my way. I'll take Jesus. Uh, nothing else matters. Because when it's all said and done, we're all getting a little plot about six by two, give or take. And it doesn't matter how much materialism we have acquired. I've never seen a hearse with a you all in tow. And we're not taking anything anywhere. But yet we are if we know the Christ of Calvary. Because some things just can't be shattered by life itself. You have that piece tonight? Any testimonies down there? Yeah. They gamble for the road's war Chose a worldly trail They didn't think of eternity The soldiers and drove the nails Can we learn from what they've done? Make the same mistake Jesus, oh Hey! 
prayers and they fail and when you see the gates of heaven you hear the master say me or the world my child which one I try the worldly pleasures and they fail. And when you see the gates of heaven, you hear the master say, Me or the world, my child, which one will take care? of heaven hear the master say me or the world my child which one will you take oh it's me or the world my child which one <laughs> oh, don't you love that song? I'll take Jesus. Yes, sir. We have a bunch of people up here tonight. Uh, you got a dry church here. <laughs> Chris is bragging about how good it is, but it's awful dry, man. Uh, yeah, I love church. I like going. I still love church. I still like the body of believers together. You know something about it, you know? Like you just, you know, even if you're not happy, you can make out. Like you, if you come to church, you should never look sad. You know, just fake it. Just put on this grin like everything is perfect. Just hold it for two hours. But some people come to church, you got to take them, move them upside down to see them grin. I don't know what's wrong with those people. God wants you to have joy. God wants you to have a good time. I'm going to ask my daughter Courtney, Pastor Courtney O'Reilly, that uh, comes out of Rocky Harbor Assembly. And she's my littlest girl. And I have two daughters and two uh, son-in-laws that eat a lot of food. <laughs> and, uh, and I have four grandchildren. She has two boys, and she's pastoring in Rocky Harbor. And uh, I don't know, maybe let's, uh, let's do um, the good. How, how many have really sensed the goodness of God through COVID? Like, it's been a lonely time, right? And it's been a time where we've been isolated, you know? And uh, not much to do other than Facebook. God bless the curse. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, when everything is right, I never ever thought a, a virus would bring the world to a standstill. I thought it was going to be nuclear war or something like that, you know? A virus. And brought the world to its knees. I never I really thought that. But it happened, didn't it? Like overnight. And uh, every, anybody can praise the Lord when it's all going good. But when times are tough, man, you got to be on foundational stuff. you got to be solid. And I thank God that he's been good through it all. All right, let's try this song. I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the 
moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. Do you know that? Give him a round of applause tonight. The Lord, give him praise. <clears throat> One more river, brother. One more river to cross. One more mountain to climb. One more valley that I got to go through. I'm leaving my trouble behind. One more battle with the devil. 
then I know he'll understand. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail-scarred hand, holding to his nail-scarred hand, yeah. One more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through, leaving my trouble behind. I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail-scarred hand, holding to his nail-scarred hand, yeah. I've had a lot of troubles and trials in my little life span. When I'm standing alone and the battle gets hot, I always do the best that I can. Across a million valley, shed a million tears. But when I come to the river of Jordan, hallelujah, I will have no fear. I will have no fear. No, no. One more river to cross, one more mountain to climb, one more valley that I gotta go through. I'm leaving my trouble behind One more battle with the devil And I know he'll understand I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah I'm holding to his nail-scarred hand I'm holding to his nail-scarred hand There's been a lot of people talking about me Since I walked that narrow way well, that's just another little valley I get through it when I pray I've climbed a lot of high mountains I crossed a lot of little streams But when I see old Jordan cold and dark That'll be the last for me That'll be the last for me oh. One more river to cross one more mountain to climb One more valley that I gotta go through I'm leaving my trouble behind One more battle with the devil And I know he'll understand I'm going through with Jesus, hallelujah I'm holding to his nail-scarred hand I'm holding to his nail-scarred hand I'm going Jesus, hallelujah, holding to his nail-scarred hands, holding to his nail-scarred hands, holding to his nail-scarred hands, holding to his nail-scarred hands. joy, you're my peace, my comfort in time of need, my refuge, you're my rock, the one I depend upon, the only road of hope when the light grows dim, the waves of doubt come crashing. You're my anchor in a trouble, Almighty God. My joy, you're my peace, my comfort in time of need. Refuge, you're my rock, the one I depend upon. Doubt come crashing in, anchor in a troubled storm, Almighty God. You bore the cross, you bear the scars. You're my bright, my morning star. 
gave me sight that I might see The kind of man I ought to be You came to die to set me free Almighty God Sing it with us now Go! Joy, you're my peace You're my comfort in time of need You're my refuge You're my rock The one I depend upon The only road of hope When the light grows dim The waves of doubt come crashing You're my anchor in a troubled storm Almighty God The only road of hope When the light grows dim Oh of doubt crash anchor a trouble storm almighty god yeah you're my anchor in a troubled storm almighty This is Mr. Lauren Gowdy, Pastor Lauren Gowdy from Ontario, formerly from Grand Falls, Windsor, and uh, we've been singing together for 30 years or more. We started when we were five. <laughs> and so we've been playing, making music together a long, long time. So he's moved to Ontario to get his stamps. <laughs> so he'll soon be home few more weeks. Yes, sir. Isn't this a great service tonight there, Pastor? Beautiful. What a great people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people come to church to have a good look, eh? You're not looking at much tonight. Chris is a half-decent looking dude, but you'll change. <laughs> we all change. But, uh, there's a couple who went to church one morning and on the way home to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. The wife looked at the husband and said, wasn't that awful? Little fellow was in the back seat, sitting in the middle, listening. Wasn't that an awful service? What in the world was the captain trying to put through him this morning? And who in the world led the worship? She was awful. And the music, the drums got me stunned. And the little fellow's going side to side. And he saw them when they put in the offering. And he said, all the, main, all the same, Dad, boy, wasn't a bad show for 50 cents. <laughs> That's funny, but there's a lot of truth. We come to church to enjoy the presence of God and to enjoy one another. And uh, we've been enjoying singing now for a long, long, long time. Over here on bass guitar is Peter Wheeler, a friend of mine out of Lewisport, former school principal, now retired, spending your money. <laughs> this is Mr. Chuck Boyd from Carter's Cove, uh, down Summerford, Twillingate area, and uh, he joined us. A few months ago, a terrific drummer, and uh, Chuck has been following us around, looking for his stamps, but it's not nothing to give here. Yes, Chuck. Dean Hodder, we've been buddies for years and years and years, comes out of Stoneville, and we've been laying, playing music together forever. And this is Mr. Donnie Andrews, um, comes out of Port Grave, and uh, every time I can get him to come on board, I just like, you know... Oh, it melts me, man. The saxophone just melts me. And uh, I know you're enjoying it tonight, and uh, we enjoy having him around. So as, as long as we can stick together and get enough money for gas, we'll keep her going. But that's not easy to do. Yeah. 
Courtney, I sing another song, sweetheart, and uh, let's see, uh, let's do a heaven song. I want to know how it feels, and uh, I, I believe in heaven. Do you? Now, 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 we want it on our own terms. Yes, we do. We all testify. I mean, do you still do that here? That's like an lost, lost art now. Like, I'm a pastor's kid, man. I could write a book on testimonies. <laughs> I really could. They're really, really good. But, you know, you, you know, we say, I long to see Jesus. And then we get sick and go to the clinic. <laughs> Just saying. You know, we all want to go to heaven, but we want it on our terms. One teacher said to her kids, who wants to go to heaven? Jimmy said, I'm going, ma'am. Stand right there, Jim. Anybody else want to go to heaven? Sally, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm a Pentecostal turn to army. I want to go. <laughs> Lined up number two. Bobby, you. Oh, dad's a pastor. I'm going. Line up number three. What about you, Jake? No. What do you mean? No. Come out there, tell of it. Not going. Don't care for it. No. No. Jake, you don't want to go to heaven when you die? Oh, yes, but I thought you were getting the crowd to go now. We want it on our own terms, don't we? What? But heaven is a real place. I don't know what it's going to be like. I really don't. None of us really do. We search the scriptures and it's a mystery. But according to how nice this place is with sin, when we get to that new heaven and a new earth, it's going to be something else. So in our earthly minds and frames, we can't fathom the joys and, the, and all that's going to be like. Streets of gold, not really. If they'd only fix the potholes here, I'd be happy. And that all sounds wonderful. Harps, I, I, hate, I hate the sound of a harp. If I got to spend a million years with someone strumming a harp in my head and, and floating around on a cloud with wings, I don't know, it might be. <laughs> but in my earthly mind, I just, I'm bored already. <laughs> but heaven is going to be real. And Jesus is real. And heaven is going to be a wonderful place. Mom and Dad told me all about it.
Chris, that sounds all right from up this way, buddy. I don't know. I don't know if that's enough to convince me to become a Salvation Army or not. I don't know. <laughs> it's great being here, buddy. I really, we're having a great time. You guys are listening so attentively there. Yeah, it's great. Mercy, 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 mercy. Not a lot of people got a lot of mercy. Some people can't forgive very much. Some people got a tough time. Forgive me. She, she grew up in church. She really did. And she was a dear old soul. She, she went everywhere. And uh, home league. I thought that was a baseball thing for years. I had no idea. <laughs> so I saw them come in one night to the bowling alley. I said, they ain't playing baseball, I guarantee you that. Yeah, she was a dear old soul, and she, uh, she got bitten. She got bitten by a wolf in the Labrador. The doctor said, I got some sad news. Uh, you have rabies. Oh, what's that? Well, it's, it's very bad, and the wolf bit you, and you only have a week to live. Being a good Christian woman, she said, okay, I can handle that. Give me a piece of paper and a pen. He said, you're going to write down some last thoughts or who you're going to... No, she said, I'm going to list ten people I'm going to bite before I die. Sometimes, even within church circles, we have a, a problem with forgiving. But mercy, we're all here tonight because of his mercy. None of us are here because of perfection. I know you're not out there. None of us. But Lauren, you know, you've studied it. You've taught about it. You've sung about it. Introduce your song and uh, let's hit it. Scripture tells us that God's mercies are new every morning. You know why? You're sinners and we need his mercy. Thank God for his grace that he gives it afresh to us. Thank God that he is there with us. This song is called Mercy Walked In. And it tells a story. And I suspect that it's your story. Mercy walked in. I stood in the courtroom, the judge turned. Swing. 
this place. If you've come tonight and you're, you're, you're held captive to some situation, something cast you down and got you holding back and you don't have any joy and tomorrow doesn't look any brighter than today, you've come to a good spot. There's mercy in the house tonight. The mercy giver is in the house tonight. Sing it, my buddy.
Olympian praise in the house tonight. Woo! <laughs> I will praise him forever and ever. For the cross made the difference for me. Your choir now sing for us. And the
see sunshine He never said song and then Lauren's going to share some some uh, information and, and some heartfelt I mean you know what though the news you know like you guys watch that like the news oh sorry Lindsay sorry we got to watch the news keep the job I know but like it, it picks up on whatever's on the go like you know COVID was on the go right swab here swab there and the news was all over it. And then the war. And everybody got interested in that. Every day. You know what? The news finds something else interesting right now. And so people tend to forget that there's a war. And lives are endangered every day. And when Lauren explains that better than I can for seven months, he was there, and I'm going to give the rest to him. But before, Courtney, I speak Jesus. Because right now, as we prepare to go into another country in our minds, none of us have it that bad tonight. We were a blessed people. Amen. We're a blessed people. Amen. And to such as us that have been given much, much is required. Amen. I Speak Jesus is one of the most beautiful songs that's come along in a, in a long time.
say, and I am going to say, there is no other name greater, mightier, more powerful than the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins, that we may have life, have it more abundantly and eternally with Him. Now, can you get... Can, Figure out another name that matches that? No, absolutely not. Major, Salvation Army Board, and the CBS congregation, thank you for hosting us uh, tonight. This is a wonderful congregation. They're engaged. They know the, the Holy Spirit. They know Jesus, and they want to worship. Wonderful, wonderful. Credence on you. I'm here to talk about, briefly, about a subject that is dear on my heart and dear on many of your hearts too. If you guys just put up the uh, display presentation, I appreciate that. Ukraine. Ukraine is undergoing a, a world crisis, a, a country in crisis. It's being attacked by an enemy that has no purpose in the country. War crimes are being committed and people need our help. People need your help. Last February, we know that the enemy moved into and across Ukrainian borders in the hopes of 
capturing the country and bringing it to its knees and bringing it into the enemy's fold. We also know that Ukraine started to fight back. That fight was done on the streets. It was done on the streets. There was fighting in farmhouses, and farmland, in apartment buildings. Bombs were falling, missiles were falling on innocent people. In cities, apartment buildings were burning down. When I heard and seen the images as you seen them on the news, my heart was stirred. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. You can't, we can't have too many children, can we? Get to work. <laughs> Amen. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full. <laughs> children are heritage of the Lord. Many children in Ukraine had to flee their homes. They fled across the border into Poland, to Romania. They were sent across the world to Canada, to Ireland. All the countries of the world were hosting Ukrainian people. About 8 million people fled with nothing but the clothes on their back. When I got the call, just after the war started, I was a captain in the Canadian Armed Forces. I had to quit in order to go over to Ukraine. A uh, Canadian soldier can't serve in a war zone unless sent. Um, I didn't know where I was going other than I knew the spirit was leading me to Kyiv. I managed to get to Lviv. The second day there, we were out into the, uh, the streets and the sympathy orchestra was, was playing in the center square, and a missile fell about a kilometer away. But the music kept on, kept on ringing. The Ukrainian people are patriotic people. They're, nation, they're nationalistic. They, they love their country. They love their people, and they want their independence and freedom. The music kept on playing. Next slide, please. My motivation for going is the same motivation you have. It comes from the example of Jesus Christ. We read in Mark 10 and 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served. Think about that. He didn't come to be served. What kind of man? He didn't come to be served. He came but to serve. But to serve and to serve and to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life for you. So... In service, in taking Christ's example, I went to Ukraine. Next slide, please. I packed up. I got permission from my wife. I just want to say permission from my wife, permission from my church board, uh, from my family and, and friends and so forth. And within about a week and a half, I uh, packed up my military gear as well, what I had, and uh, I went on to Ukraine. Next slide. As I said, the second day I was there, bombs were falling. Uh, I arrived in Kyiv. Uh, an individual gave me a, a name to a church that was there, a Baptist church, that was doing some work in the city and abroad. And I was able to uh, start doing ministry there. The very first uh, half hour, I met the, uh, the pastor. And he, I gave him my papers, and I had contacted him in advance, and he knew what my qualifications were. And he looked at me and he said, what do we need? I said, well, you had a missile fall about a kilometer away. You need a, a bomb shelter. Next slide, please. This is the, uh, the Lviv Orchestra. Next slide. This is the church. It's called the Temple of Peace. Next slide. So we started creating a, a bunker. This is just one room in the bunker. It was an old uh, storage unit. There was actually mold on the floor and, and so abroad. And we had a volunteer group just come in and clear out all these rooms and stock it with bunk beds and stores enough for uh, two weeks just in case the, uh, the bombs were falling. That was my first job. Next slide. Within a week, so many people were coming through that door that we had to start providing high-risk evacuation missions to various places where 
uh, the enemy was occupying and nearabouts. So we start doing that, bringing hundreds of people, thousands of people uh, through vehicles. Civilians uh, donated their vehicles and wanted to drive as drivers to, uh, to get these people and bring them to safety. Uh, this temple was just one of the safe havens that we brought people to. We would give them food, we'd give them medicine, clothes, immediate basic needs that need needed to survive and to move to more safer areas in Ukraine and abroad. These evacuations were dangerous. There was a, a sister crew that was doing evacuations and they were hit by a rocket and they perished, unfortunately. We had children coming through, pampers, baby food, all that kind of stuff we needed. Next slide, please. You get the idea. Close quarters. This was an emergency situation. They were so thankful that there was a place provided. They were so thankful that food was waiting for them. Next slide. Give you an idea. Next slide. As the cities were being bombed, this is the city of Boyanka. It's about a, maybe an hour away, 45. The Ukrainian people would know how far it is away from uh, Kyiv. I was part of a team that went into the city and we started to clean up the debris and clean up the debris. And of course, in buildings that were hit, there were other things in the debris that we had to take care of. And when we found uh, a body, there was a hush that went across the whole rescue team. And the reverence you could hear, the silence was deafening. It was just an honorable situation as the, the body, bodies were being excavated and so forth. Next slide. This is another uh, building in Boyanka, probably about 500 meters from the other one. But you don't see behind this building, there's an old quarter of town that's been destroyed. In this case, I was talking to a lady who was going back into her uh, apartment building to try to find her cat. And uh, so behind that is all destroyed. About 300 meters out from that hole that was hit by a rocket attack from helicopters, people's lives were scattered and strewn. We picked up an old Orthodox uh, Bible and uh, they brought it back to the Temple of Peace. But uh, this is just one of the many pictures that depict the uh, devastation in Ukraine. Next slide. This is just the building being hit by a rocket and you can imagine. Now where are these people going to go? Can you imagine their lives are now destroyed? Not destroyed in the sense that you know, they lost their life, but they have nothing now. They have to start from scratch. But your generosity and giving that, that was channeled through my organization helped to pay for these basic expenses. Next slide. This is an example of what one uh, rocket could do. This is in the back of a, a farmer's uh, field uh, around one of the villages, about three hours from Kiev. And uh, the farmer went out after this bomb had struck, his, half of his building, his house was sort of damaged and so forth. But imagine if that rocket hit his farmhouse. Now I'm going to tell you, many rockets hit farmhouses. Lives were killed. Families lost their fathers, lost their mothers, lost their brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, lost their children. I lost a son 10 years ago in a tragic motor, motorcycle accident, which... Uh, NTV was grateful, Lindsay covered. I know what that grief is like. Ukraine is a city in grief. They've lost so much. Next slide. Went into another town. Uh, this town was called Bucha. Bucha was an area where there was a massacre of about 200 people. And uh, as the enemy moved out of the city, they were burning and firing all kinds of stuff. Uh, the streets are littered with, at this time, was littered with uh, cartridges and ammunition, stuff like that. This is a bomb hit next to this one. There was a little crater. But if you look carefully on this little toy apparatus, there's little holes in it. That's debris from rocks and the, and the, the rockets and so forth. 
Now you imagine what, what it would be like if children were playing there. I don't know the story if it was, but you can imagine. Devastating, absolutely devastating. Next slide. This is just an example of some of the, the armaments that were left behind. Of course, there was a counterattack. The Ukrainians pushed out the enemy, and that caused more devastation in the areas too as well. Some people did not want to leave the war zone, the immediate war zone. They're attached to the land. As Newfoundlanders, you know what it's like to be attached to the land around the cove. People don't want to leave the area that they, they spent their lives in, in the farms, passed on from centuries. And uh, unfortunately, some of them paid the, the ultimate price for that. Turn, uh, next slide. This is just a, uh, some example of the enemy left some, de some de debris behind. In the fence, there's shrapnel. I've seen chunks and lumber of like a foot, 18 inches in width with holes in it as the metal of shrapnel just blew through the sheds and the houses. Next slide. Now this is an interesting story. Uh, we were in another city and we went in just to do an essay of what was the needs in that city. This individual you see here, he's wearing a blue, blue bags on his feet. We had finished doing our little essay around and we went back to our vehicles and the driver noticed a smell. And he said, what's that smell? And when they did their little investigation, this individual had human bile matter on his feet. He had walked through, he had walked through a scene and didn't realize it. And uh, just another reality of the war. You don't realize, you're looking down and there's, there was a vessel where there was once a soul, realizing that, is this real? This is real? This is real. Crazy story, what I won't forget. He's, this gentleman's still doing the work in, in Ukraine. Next slide. Hospitals lost their electricity. Uh, the enemy was targeting the electrical grid, still has. You already know that uh, Ukraine has been without electricity, certain parts of it, for a very long uh, time. We know that the oil pipes have been turned off and so forth. Uh, one part of my ministry was to provide uh, stoves in preparation for winter. Uh, providing uh, solar lights, that they would have lights in the evening and so like that. Um, medication, hospitals were running out of medication. So we were able to coordinate with, uh, mostly from Poland, and to buy large amounts of medicine and be able to distribute it throughout the various cities to the hospitals that were just screaming, we need medicine, we got people coming in, this is a war zone, we don't have the materials that we need to provide the care that the people needed. So when we brought these boxes in, they were so thankful. <coughs> you will notice that there's a Ukrainian soldier. A lot of our missions that we did for evacuations and into cities for debris cleanup and body removal, uh, we were accompanied by the military to give us uh, security. So it was very kind. Next. We started, uh, some uh, organizations were donating uh, sprinter vans. Uh, some of the churches around and organizations were able to help us to distribute and relocate foods from various areas around Kiev and in the east and to the north. So this is just uh, two examples. The blue van you see up here was another group from Poland, I believe. Beautiful group. They were doing uh, a news reporting and, once again, evaluating the need in the area. Next slide. <laughs> this may not seem something like something very important to you. This is a, a bun. Uh, one day I sat down in, into our, our headquarters and this gentleman came in. He was doing evacuations and he brought in a bag of these buns. And he tells the story and the, the people came in after. There was a, a group of people, uh, an old man and a woman, and I think there's someone else, that lived underneath their house while the enemy was, while the enemy was occupying their village, and all they had to eat while hiding underneath their house was the buns. Now, can you imagine surviving two weeks like that? I tasted it, and no offense to these people, it tasted like dirt, because they were just, they threw everything in. It didn't taste good. And of course, after two weeks, 
but no refrigeration and stuff like that in the, you know, in the, in the spring. It, it, it was sketchy. So when we started bringing in food to these villages as the enemy left, they were so thankful. So thankful. Next slide. This is just a, another city. This one was Vinitsa. There was a number of church organizations we were able to coordinate with to bring food to them. And since they knew the people and the need better than what we did, we, uh, we coordinated with them and they did wonderful work. Still doing wonderful work. Still relying on, on us to supply uh, materials. There's a lady here, Mama. She, you know, she got the crutches. Papa is beside her. That's, that's what I called them. I would visit uh, her every time I went to the, to the, her uh, community. She did not. She did not have walkers, so our ministry was able to provide things like the walkers, canes. Some people needed glasses. We were able to purchase glasses. Some people needed dental work. A lot of the dentists provided their time freely for uh, you know dental work that they needed and so forth. So it was, it's uh, the, the every time we went somewhere. It seemed like our, our mission started to expand and expand because the needs were becoming more apparent to us. Next slide. You see just some distribution, some food. Uh, we started to do up little bags. Each of these little bags was enough food to last for at least two weeks. And then, uh, you know, we do our circle again. Next slide. More food and distribution. You notice uh, in the background here, you will notice a gentleman holding up a lantern. It's a kerosene lantern. When was the last time you used a kerosene lantern? There's a big dichotomy, a big difference between the cities in Ukraine and the outskirts and the farmland of Ukraine. It's like stepping back in time, uh, like 100 years, 150 years, 200 years, and people uh, working the farms. Refrigeration is a root cellar. Can you remember the time when you had a root cellar? Some of you probably can, but they were using root cellars. A lot of the food is bottled and uh, preserved and dried, so that was very interesting to see that. But the kerosene lamp and the solar lights that we got were able to just provide lighting and, and to some degree, heating too from the kerosene lamps as well. These people were so thankful. They would line up and wait for hours for us to come. And <laughs> this is very interesting. We started handing out bags, right? And we, we had a few little extra, and we, we said we should just, instead of going back empty, which didn't make sense, just pass them out. We went to pass it. This happened to me twice, and it struck me so, so strong. We went to pass it to a, a lady, and she said, no, no, I already have one bag. But listen, if you're willing, I'll show you a family that doesn't have food, and we'll bring that, that bag of food to, the, to that family. And I thought, wow, that's a brother taking care of a brother, a sister taking care of a sister, a family member is far greater than blood. It's, it's who we are here now. We're part of the family of God, right? We're part of the family of God, and we, we support each other. Next slide. More food distribution. You notice baby food down here. Uh, some food and medicine up here. We used to do night runs. Um, we had to do right, night runs because of the nature of the enemy around us and stuff like that. So we'd be traveling with no lights on in the dark. And sometimes the window were down. Trying. Are we still on the road? Are we still on the road? That was unique. Uh, but uh, people would be lined up in the dark, just waiting. And here they are. Next slide. More food distribution. Uh, this little building here was an old building. We went to one village, and there was no leadership in, in the village. Uh, it seemed to work. But we needed a storeroom, so they managed to find a, a, an old building. But we needed some kind of organized leadership within the village, and no one wanted to take the leadership because they felt like they would, they would show favoritism, and you know, they were just didn't feel like it until finally we said, listen, uh, the senior pastor said, someone's got to take leadership, and you're the leader. The guy, the guy took it, and he ran with it. You know what? Best leader going. He did fantastic, and he's doing a great job. Next slide. You see, uh, we had to uh, purchase generators for the reconstruction of some of the houses that uh, weren't totally damaged. Now remember, this is, I went there in, in March, and we knew that the winter was going to be, we had like several months to prepare for the winter. And we, we said we gotta prepare as, as many houses, get them fixed up so that they have heat, 
And in some cases, we started building little mini homes. And the mini homes were like $4,000. It was like a sea, sea can. And we, the, the, there was a company that refurbished those and made them into uh, livable areas. But this is just some of the things that we were able to purchase. The bigger stove, uh, we put into uh, buildings that were able to house like 60 people at a time if they had to go for emergencies or to stay so that we could uh, meet the greater need with the more efficiently. We're always trying to think of what's the efficient, most efficient way to use the resources we have to uh, meet the greater need. Next slide. Uh, it didn't take long before uh, to realize that people needed first aid training. Uh, it was foreign to them. People were being injured. They were coming in from their evacuation areas to our churches. They needed medical attention. I would go out on mission. You see people needing all kinds of medical aid. I have certain medical training that was able to, I was able to put off first aid training, uh, which <laughs> it was interesting. There was a lady from, who was associated with the ministry, Ukraine Ministry of Defense. She came to one of my uh, three-day first aid uh, sessions, and she said, listen, would you be willing to, to teach uh, soldiers? And I said, well, it just so happens that I was a soldier, and I could teach tactical combat casualty care, uh, which is a different type of first aid that you do on the battlefield if someone is injured and you need to excavate them off. So I was teaching first aid to civilians, and then I started teaching it to the military in Kiev, up north, and then in the east on the front line. There's a, a medic, it's interesting, um, qualifications of a medic. I went to this uh, training camp, and there was a, a group of medics there. And I said, okay, what's your training? They said, this is my training. They had a badge. Someone just gave them a patch that said medic on, and they were responsible to get for their own training and so forth. So when myself and my team came and we, we were training, that was, that was beneficial to them. But uh, I figured I, since I was over there, maybe around 1,500 students I was able to train. And then they were able to go out and train other people. Some of them were too as well. Next slide. Uh, this is a, a general up top. He, oh, I shouldn't say that. Sensitive material. Uh, just showing their appreciation. I met up with some uh, foreign nationals who came over and was able to help me in the combat role of teaching first aid. That was good. And uh, so forth. Next slide. I'm trying not to give you too much sensitive information because of obvious reasons. Um, so I was up north. I was teaching tactical combat, um, casualty care. I was able to preach the gospel while I was doing that. In my first aid kit, there was a Bible. And I would always end my training with, listen, I got something here that's greater than anything I have here that's going to give you a life that's going to change your life. And I take out the Bible and I start to share the gospel. And I know at least 1,500 people received the gospel because you guys made it possible that I was able to go over there and set up teams. I was uh, stationed with a drone unit. I ran security for them. And uh, we would go out on mission. And we did missions and so forth. This is just an idea. Some of the weaponry, some of the foxholes and so forth. I would not get in a foxhole. Anybody here who's in the military realizes how a proper foxhole is made. It's reinforced by various material and so forth. If a bomb hit next to this, this would collapse. I was in foxholes that were just shell scrapings, and bombs were falling all around, and you know, it got a little bit hairy. But I would never get into this. This is a death trap. But I, I took a picture of it to say, this is not what to do. Next slide. Uh, this is just an example of a, uh, something being neutralized. This is about a kilometer away. We were doing a mission here and we were uh, taking care of business. Next slide. I got a call from another person associated with the Ministry of Defense. It doesn't take long for the Ukraine um, government to realize what foreign people are in their country. They have departments to take care of that. And I got this call and uh, someone knew that I was a pastor 
And they asked me if I would be willing on a, like a immediate notice, notice, would I be willing to pray for dead and dying soldiers and for their family? I, I, I felt so humbled. <laughs> so humbled, so, so privileged to, uh, to pray for soldiers and their family. I remember one, uh, one situation. We were doing a mission, a humanitarian mission, this was. Most of my work was humanitarian mission. And uh, we had passed a side of the road, and there was dead, dead bodies on the side of the road, and everyone stopped, and were, uh, people were taking pictures and so forth. And uh, we, we were going back into the vehicles, and people were getting into their vehicles. And it struck me. The Spirit spoke to me. They, they, just get out. And I, I went up to the body, and I, I prayed for the family. There's no sense to pray for the dead. I started praying for the family because, like I said, I know what it's like to lose a son. And I, I prayed that those families would, would find peace. You know, the, the Russian, I'm gonna, one of the few times I will say Russian, the Russian people are not our enemies. The enemies are the one who are perpetrating the crimes and so forth into Ukraine. I have beautiful, beautiful Russian friends. Absolutely. We don't want to stereotype that. Scripture tells us to love our enemies. And uh, that's a hard one to do, isn't it, sometimes? But that's read from the master's voice, read from his mouth. Love our enemies. So I, I prayed for the family, and it was very interesting. Next slide. The money, we're here today to raise money. I'm not ashamed to ask for money. I'll say that right out. I'll look right in your eye. I'm not ashamed to ask for money. Because the money that you give provides mainly food. The food is a consumable. It doesn't last long. And it needs a resupply. Medicine, we need medicine. People get sick. People get better. People get sick again. From the aged to the infant, we need medicine. We need funds for the logistics of gasoline, fixing cars. We were going into areas that the roads were very bad, and sometimes it could be you know, flat, flat tire or something like that. We needed those funds and so forth. So I'm not ashamed to ask for money. Not at all. And I'm asking you not to be ashamed to give it. Don't be begrudging. The funds that you give today, and for those of you online that uh, are listening today or listening whenever, the funds go for these basic needs to Ukrainians. I have a number of teams and a number of contacts in Ukrainian churches, so forth, that are doing wonderful work as we speak. They're doing food runs. They're doing medicine runs. They're doing evacuation runs from different areas. They're doing the good work of the kingdom of God, which is in the hearts and minds of people. But you know what? These people could be easily your brothers and sisters if you were in that area. So be liberal with your giving. Be kind with your giving. Be loving with your giving. Be as Christ would. Be as Christ would, and that's a big one. At this time, I'm going to ask Glenn come forward and this, Courtney and the team we're going to call upon the ushers I believe Major you have some ushers in order for those of you who are online there are two ways to give uh, through e-transfer through finance underscore ppt at hotmail.com that's finance underscore ppt hotmail.com and that will be uh, receipted for our charitable giving. If you don't want to go through that scenario, that's a church. You could also go through ldgoudie at hotmail.com. ldgoudie at hotmail.com. And we will get those funds to the people that need it most. I want to thank you tonight for listening. Uh, I know it was a quick presentation. I couldn't get into a lot of things because of the nature of the sensitivity. Uh, there's a lot of cyber operations going on, and I have to be careful what I say and so forth. 
Uh, but listen to the news. The news don't give you the, all the story and the horrors that are happening and, uh, as a result of this war. Hopefully the war will be over soon, but who knows. So in that, I give you thanks. For the people of Ukraine that will receive, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Before we receive the offering tonight, we're just going to have a short prayer. Uh, why did we come here tonight? It's like, we, this, is, this thing just happened. And Lorne has paid his own ticket to fly from Ontario. We did not come for your money. We did not come so you could pay us. My goodness, we're retired teachers. We're filthy rich. <laughs> we came to Port Grave. We come every year to do the Fisherman's Weekend. And it just so happened that the morning service shifted and the morning service was the fisherman's service so in an instant this night became available and I don't know why I've listened to your production and I've heard your music and it's where I'm at it's what I love and I felt this would be a great place just to minister I wanted to come in, and so I just called up Chris and haven't seen those guys since Morton's Arbor. Man, that goes back a long time, buddy. And uh, I just, in an instant, I just felt, yeah, let's go to CBS. Let's see if we can get in and just sing. I just love to sing. Whether you like it, I couldn't care less. <laughs> Bob Dylan made records that nobody understood a word he said. <laughs> and so and I, knew, I knew this was a place where I could just come and just have a good time and so we didn't come looking f f to be paid as a band we're here because I knew Lorne was coming I knew his heart I know what kind of a guy he is I know he's a giver and he's gone all the way over there just to help and maybe you can help some way that's all maybe maybe you can't it's hard going those days but maybe you can but whatever you give tonight is funneled through him, and you can bank on his honesty, integrity, and his spirituality, and guarantee it that the money is not going to go astray or end up in some coffer somewhere. It's going directly where the need is. So that's why we're here. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, family, for having us. Thank you, church, for having us. And uh, we give you an opportunity to share. That's all. And stand now with us, will you? And uh, let's remember the Ukraine in prayer together. And then we'll sing. You can be seated again. And, or maybe you can... No, nah, you can be seated after. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for what we have and what we've been given and how we've been blessed and how you've blessed us in so many ways. Lord, I'm not asking for anything... I've been blessed beyond measure. I'm not asking anything from you right now. I'm a blessed man. I thank you for my family, my heritage. I thank you for my church. I thank you for what I know, and I thank you for the gospel. But Lord, now I'm asking that somehow, somehow I might reach out and help somebody in another country. Somebody might know that I'm interested enough to feed them. I'm interested enough to share the gospel. And Lord, right now I thank you for Lauren and his gift and his ministry and his sensitivity. I pray for his family. I pray that as he continues his endeavors in this missionary work, that you will be his strength, his guide, his light. And Lord, let the passion burn and may it continue until Jesus comes. And we know that's about to happen. But before that, Lord, maybe by reaching out, we can help bring someone into the kingdom. Somebody into the kingdom. And that's all we ask, Lord, to be that hand extended. So right now, bless this people. And as they give, you give back to them in good measure. And Lord, give them health and strength and joy and peace. And Lord, what you've started in this assembly, let it continue by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Let the spirit that is now in this building and is vibrating through these members, may it intensify. And may this lighthouse beam and may others be attracted and let the gospel be spread all over this world because of the honesty and the integrity and the transparency of the people of this place. That's all we ask, Lord, to be used by you, for you. We are servants. We thank you, Lord. To God be the glory. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Let's sing a hymn. Yep. There is power, power, a wonder-working power in the blood. Chris gave me three hours. <laughs> so we got almost two in. And that's only just like, that's not even a movie. And it's not a hockey game. How many Leaf fans are out there? You poor people. <laughs> you still got the nerve to do that? She said to her class, who here? Who here? Chairs for Toronto. And everybody jumped up. Toronto, 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 Toronto. Except for Mackie. Mackie. No. What's wrong, Mackie? I cheer for Montreal. Anybody here with me on that one? <laughs> We're off here. Mackie, how come you're cheering for Montreal? Because Pop cheered for Montreal. Dad cheers for Montreal. And I'm cheering for Montreal. She's Mackie in my classroom. You make up your own mind, stand on your own two feet. You have your own opinion. She says, suppose your grandfather was an idiot and your dad was a moron. What would you be? I'd be a Toronto fan, I guarantee you that. <laughs> So it's not been a hockey game yet tonight, but boy, I've enjoyed playing, and I hope you've enjoyed the band. Can you give them a hand right now? They've been doing great. 
<laughs> yes, sir. We'll be back. Yes, sir, if I can get me one of those white shirts. Thank you. 
that because I can't play it. All oh, that new stuff, you know, I'm real old. That new stuff. Uh, Chris, you play that new stuff, all that minor stuff and all that? You good at that? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm awful. But uh, I don't know any music. I wouldn't know a note if it hit me in the head. I haven't got a clue. So anything new like that, I got to ask her to do that for you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Courtney. You've been, you've been lovely. A couple of more tunes. to hold my hand he's promised to help me stay when the valley gets low and the reef is too wide i know that he will take me to the other side his promises will light my way and never let my feet to stay living in his word i will overcome standing on his promises one by Shirt at my very next day. No, no. Promise to hold my hand. He's promised to help me stay. When the valley gets low and the river's too wide, I know that he will take me to the other side. His promises will light my way up and never let my feet to stray. home soon but sing with me my most favorite song in the hymn book you know what that is a hymn book that's a book of hymns anyone ever have a hymn book how many ever had all their own hymn book yeah yeah I have my hymn book blue one I, I knew the hymns we'd sing every Sunday night same hymns I knew the numbers and I couldn't wait for Page 206, Amazing Grace. Because there, Mom would have sin sins. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about, huh? Yeah, yeah, you couldn't wait for Amazing Grace because you'd start going. Come 
Jesus. 
sing one more song, I think. <laughs> Mr. Pete Wheeler on bass guitar for coming all the way tonight. And <laughs> Mr. Chuck Boyd on the drum kit, just setting the table. <laughs> Mr. Dean Otter on lead guitar with the Fender Twist. <laughs> and that saxophone that melts my heart, Mr. Donnie Andrews. Lauren Gowdy, a special friend of mine, always will be. And uh, oh, we got to do a lot more of this, buddy. <laughs> Toronto or no. <laughs> Courtney Lower, you're just getting better with age. And uh, yeah, just great, 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 great. And for Glenn Tedford, who just goes to show that the Holy Spirit will work through anybody. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, some, some people just don't get it, man. They don't get joy. I don't know what it is, but it's great, it's great, it's great. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm, I'm doing good. I've been through it all, but, you know, cancer and a heart attack, and uh, I don't know. I don't have many pieces left that are good. Um, <laughs> I've got two hips replaced, and uh, I told my wife, then don't bother with the funeral home. Just go over to the recycling shop and let me go. <laughs> but I'm better off than the little girl in grade nine who come up and said to me one day, Sir, any of you who said that in school, Sir, Sir, to the teacher, Sir, Sir, Nan is some sick. She got to go to St. John's for an autopsy. <laughs> Boy, there's not much hope. <laughs> Before Lauren sings us home, Secord, my testimony to you, I've been through a war myself. I thank God every day for the ability just to be able to get up and sing. We have a farm, we have horses, and we, we have, you know, we have a greenhouse. We do, you know, lots of things, hobbies. And I love life, but to be able to sing, to just to be able to sing, is my greatest joy. And if I leave this world, I want to leave singing. And when I wake up, I want to still be singing. <laughs> it's my desire to live for Jesus. My desire to live for him. So often I fail and bring him pain. It's still my desire.
desire to help someone today. Someone who may have failed to see the way. For I too was once so lost. But I found my way to the cross Now it's my desire My desire Thanks so much for having us tonight. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Lauren, what are we going to sing, ma'am? I can almost see the lights of the city. And then we're going to leave tomorrow and say goodbye to the city. And that's fine with me. I'm a country boy. John tells me all about a city so high above where we'll meet in the spirit.
that you're not ready for that day or you have a need and it's hard it's hard chugging along and, and, and you don't have the joy that you should have well we can't close this thing tonight without inviting you to an altar amen I mean this place is a place of mercy and forgiveness and love and so tonight as we sing this song and most of us are singing it because we believe it what a day that's going to be but some of you can't sing that tonight because you're not sure and tonight life is not sure and your health is not sure but if you've got some good years left or if you've got a day left and you feel healthy now is the time to give it to jesus amen it's 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 you know it's okay to have a death a deathbed confession but i tell you it's a lot better to give some time for jesus so if you feel tonight that you got you got some time on your hands to give to the lord what a great night to come tonight, and, and you'll have a family of, of loving people that will just bring you in and, and pray you into the kingdom. And because that's why we've come tonight, not for nothing else, just to sing with you and have church, amen? Just to have church and have people's needs met. You're here tonight, seems like a long walk, but it's not. And, and if you come tonight, just come and identify that, yeah, I, I, life is not what it should be. I just need some more joy. I need the peace of God. I need forgiveness of sins. I need repair in my marriage. I need some help with my kids. There's just things that I can't handle on my own. There is a Jesus tonight who can take care of all that and help you have a better life and get you ready for heaven. Amen? Oh, one day that will be.
We give him praise tonight for all that's been accomplished here. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you. What a joy to sit under your ministry tonight. It's a blessing, actually, to sit back for a change. It's been good and to be ministered to. Uh, just want to draw a quick attention to what just happened here. Our dear friend Wanda, Wanda Dahl, is going through cancer. And, uh, you know, that dreaded word, right? And it causes all sorts of fear within us, not knowing the future. But, you know, some months ago, Wanda gave her life to Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Her hope, her hope tonight is in Jesus. Her, along with Rex, knelt here just giving that entire situation over to the Lord. He's in control. He's in control, and Wanda, we continue to uplift you in our prayers, believing God to continue to work that miracle that's needed in your life. You got another course in you, don't you? I do. Come on, buddy, let's do it. Yeah, she's gonna take it. I'm not gone into overtime yet, so we're good. All my hope is in Jesus, man. Here we go.
when we started singing this song, and it was at a concert, big church, big crowd. And uh, Courtney was going to sing this for the first time. And afterwards, a guy came up to meet us. He'd just been released from prison. And he was introduced to us by a friend. And somewhere in the prison cell, he uh, found the Lord. <laughs> How many know that you can find him anywhere? So somewhere in the prison cell over on the west coast, he found the Lord. He didn't know it that night, but he needed, I suppose, confirmation of what he had done or something. So he got into the service concert, sitting there waiting for something to register. Courtney sang the second verse. Here we go. a little bit more of this. <laughs> this is fantastic. Glory, glory to God. But I think we're going home. Uh, we'll right. sing them home. We'll sing them home as they leave. Yeah, we'll sing them out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out and supporting our friends tonight. I know you've enjoyed the singing. You've enjoyed the music. And I know you've enjoyed the presentation. Heart stirring, wasn't it? Certainly an eye-opener for all of us. And I know that each of you have given tonight from a cheerful heart. You want to give back. And you want to be able to help. And I know tonight that you've done that. And thank you so very, very much. I'm going to invite my wife out to pray. See? 
<laughs> you notice we had a little fight in the front there and who was going to come up, right? So I said, all right, I got this. I'll call you up. We'll do this. We'll do it. God bless you, friends. Amen. Wow. This place is full. Our hearts are full. Will you raise your hand towards Ukraine tonight as we pray? God's blessing upon them. Father, we are in this place, and we agree as one. We agree that you are God. You are Lord of this universe. You are King of kings, and you are Lord of lords. And it doesn't matter where we are around this globe, you are there. And so, God, we just pray that right now, as we've celebrated and rejoiced in who you are and the salvation that is ours through you as we have rejoiced in the fact that the blood of jesus christ saves and and cleanses us from all sin and the hope of heaven is ours when we know you as savior so we believe this evening that you are able to answer prayer and tonight we pray that even in the midst of disaster and war, you are still God and you are still in control. Even when all around us may seem that we are standing on shaky ground, yet you are our one firm foundation and it is upon you on which we stand. And so our faith is upon you. We are united in that. And though we may not all be able to, to say the same prayer that's on my mind this evening, we can join our hearts and our voices and we can all pray our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. Power the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We give you praise. All the armies of the world will someday gather, and they'll pass before that last reviewing stand. Plowshares and the Prince of Peace will give the last command when King Jesus comes to live with us again. Plowshares. The Prince of Peace will give the last command. 